Hi ST fans and welcome back. After the popularity of our mask cleaning video, in this one we're going to talk about cleaning your regulator after a dive trip. Regulators are the most important part of your equipment arsenal, as without one you're not going to be able to breathe underwater. Regs are pretty robust pieces of kit, but they still need a bit of loving when you return from your watery adventures, so I'll show you my regular routine. For those here for the first time, my name's Mark, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Scuba Diver Media Brand, and welcome to the Scuba Diver YouTube channel. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos, and ring that bell so you get notification of the latest releases. And don't forget to check out below how you can get a free digital subscription to any of our magazines. That's Scuba Diver UK, Scuba Diver Australia and New Zealand, and Scuba Diver Destinations, which is our US and Canada edition. And if you want to get your hands on a print version, we've got a special subscription deal for our YouTube followers. Now, let's dive into the video. So while you're on your trip, you've been rinsing it after every dive, if you feel that way, rinsing it at the end of every day, rinsing it at the end of the week, which is my preference because it's only getting wet again the next day. Anyway, you get yourself home. And this is my routine. With the first stage, I just dunk that in, but not the end that actually goes into your pillar valve, obviously. Just give that a nice soak. If you can stand it in water like that and leave it, to float, that's what I do, because it really gets in to all the nooks and crannies, any of the heat sink vents, any of the fins, and it just really gets any salt crystals out that are left in there. For the rest of it, I just give it a rinse under the tap. Like that, just quick, just get into any last little bits, like that. And then that's pretty good for the first stage. Things to of note, if you've got a turret like this one, make sure you get plenty of uh, fresh water into there. And then also, if any of your hoses like this one has a swivel at the top there, so make sure you give that a good rinse. And then the other thing you wanna do is make sure that you pull these back and give it a good rinse underneath because salt water and salt particles and bits love to live under there and that will corrode where the hose is going. So if you can give all that a good clean, you'll be sorted. So that's nice and solid, that's fairly straightforward. It's more the second stages that are a bit more finicky. So what I like to do with these is I will give them a good submerge and I'll give them a light shake around in the water like so just to get the water working in there. Definitely do not depress the purge valve when you've not got it connected to a tank because otherwise you're going to get water into that hose and then it's just going to stay in that hose which then means it can just end up into either the first stage or the second stage afterwards and that is not good for your gear. So don't press that, just give it a good rinse, get all the water in there. What I tend to do is if you've got Venturis or if you've got cracking resistance controls, is give them a bit of a work back and forth while it's in the water, just to really get any salt in there out. Again, give it a good swivel there where the swivel valve goes in. And remember, these bits, pull them back, Make sure you get in there, give it a good swirl into that to clean inside of this. Now, rule of thumb that I've got is that when I've been for a trip is I like to soak them because rinsing them like this is great for getting off salt water when you've just come back from a dive. Uh, so in the rinse bucket at the dive center, for instance, or in the sink or the bath of your accommodation, giving them a quick do before you come home. But it still leaves some salt particles in. So what I tend to do when I come home from a trip is I do what I've just shown you here, give that first stage a rinse as planned, give the primary and the octopus a clean in the same way. At this point, I also inspect the mouthpieces because this is a good time to see if they've got any, they're starting to wear or you've bitten them and you're gonna to need to replace them. So at least you know, rather than rock it up for your trip the next time and finding that one of the tube pieces is hanging off. So you've got it into the water and everything, and I would just leave it to soak. I tend to put it into warm water, uh, as opposed to cold water, because I just find warm water helps release the salt particles better. And I leave them for literally for hours. Um, I'll often put them in warm water on the morning, 
and leave them all that day and all overnight and then get them out the next day. That way they have been sat in fresh water for a long time and that is going to get rid of any last salt crystals that are inside it. And then once basically for drying is I will just let the water out of wherever I'm washing them, whether that's the sink or it's the bath, and then I will just leave them to dry like this for a couple of days to get all the water out of them. If you haven't got the space where you can leave it in your bath like that, just take them and put them back in your storage, in your garage or whatever, leave them like that. Don't leave them sitting like this. You leave them like that, the water will tend to drain out of the exhaust or out of the mouthpiece and the last bits, and then they'll be dry and they should be good to go for your next diving adventure. Regardless of where you are on the planet, it's vitally important to have your regulators serviced annually or every other year for certain brands. Refer to your manufacturer recommendations. Doing a thorough clean, as demonstrated, will certainly help maintain your regulator, but a proper, regular service is imperative. Here in the UK, we're anxiously awaiting the end of this month, when diving will be able to resume around our shoreline and at inland dive sites. So this is the perfect time to get your regulator serviced at your local dive centre. Get your reg in perfect working order before hitting the water for the first time in 2021. The benefits are twofold. You'll know your regulator is not going to give you any problems once you resume diving and you'll be supporting your local centre at a time they need it the most. What are some of your hints and advice regarding maintaining your regulator setup? Leave your comments below and if you've got a question, fire away. Because if we can't answer, maybe someone in our community will be able to. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget, you can grab a free digital magazine in the description below. As always, stay safe, and if you're one of the lucky people who's already able to get out and dive, enjoy.